Okay, well, I'm going to call it, it's 15 seconds early, but I'm going to call it uh, 6 o'clock. So uh, I'm Mark McIntyre, Chair of the Board of Architecture Review and Historic Preservation. With me tonight live, we have Kathy Buxton and Susan Stevenson, and my two other board members, Jane Clare and Nina uh, Edward Anker, are on Zoom and joining us on Zoom tonight. So with that, we have quorum. So I'm going to motion to open the August 12th meeting of the Board of Architecture Review and Historic Preservation. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Also joining us live tonight, we have Alex Wallach, our planning director, uh, Alice Cooley, our council. In the back, we have Jackie Allen as recording secretary and Sage Certain on video. So with that, I think we will roll. Um, a couple of announcements before we start. We had canceled the meeting later in August. So the next meeting after tonight will be September 9th, 2024. So there'll be we're almost a month from now. So just remember that the next meeting will be September 9th. Um, the other announcement I'd like to make is about um, where we stand right now with the landmarking decisions. There was some delay getting some of the materials to the various homes that are under consideration for landmarking. And also, because it feels like the whole landmarking discussion deserves a meeting of its own because we're going to have members of the public, um, and a lot of people have a lot to say, what we've determined to do is take the public hearing for our landmarks and move them to a to-be-determined date in November, and we're going to call a special meeting the ARB, and we're going to handle that as a single meeting topic. Um, do you need us to motion that? Uh, what I would ask that you do is adjourn it to, let's say, um, October 28th. Okay. And then um, we can announce the date once we have it finalized, and I can communicate to uh, the representatives at the owners. Okay. So motion to move the public hearings for landmark designation review to November 28th. Um, um, no. October 28th. I'm sorry, October 28th. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So with that... Notes. Next up is meeting approval for the meeting, uh, the minutes from July 29th. Did everyone get the meetings and have a chance to read them? Yes. Yeah. Any, uh, Jane, did you get them? Yes. And Nina, same question? And yes. then do we have any additions or corrections? Okay. So motion to approve the minutes from July 22nd, 24. It, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we have several adjournment requests tonight. Um, the first one is for, I'm going to motion to approve the adjournment requests for Darren, and, uh, Daphne and Darren Brumsky at 141 Pulaski to September 9th and for 300 North Main Street at 300 North Main Street to uh, September 9th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We also have a request to move Tina and Kareem Sammy from 80 Wandanch Lane to September 9th. I'm going to motion we... Yes? October 28th. Right. That's Here's our okay. You're right. Okay. Before you move, and I appreciate it. Thank you, John. Um, so what I'm going to do is two things. Because we've had this is the third request to move, I'm going to motion to accept the client's request to October 29th with a requirement for renoticing. 28th. So 28th, with the requirement for renoticing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Which brings us to signs. Um, is anyone here from Par East Mortgage Company, 18 Windmill Lane? Did you submit new materials? I'm sorry? Did you submit any new materials? No, I thought I would bring it. Uh, okay. Normally we like to have everything in advance, but it's a sign and it's a business, so we'll try to see if we can help. I appreciate that. Sorry. Okay. Ron Fisher from Fisher Signs and Shirts for the applicant. Great. So you had asked that we adjust the yeah, can you see, Sage, can you see if you can get this on the uh, video for me? Yeah. Do you want me to rotate it? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. We just need good. Oh, that's cool. Oh. oh. Yes. Yep. <laughs> new. That's new. Okay. Yeah. Now it's facing that way? Huh. Who knew? Okay. okay. We don't okay. Care. Um, so you had asked for it not to be between the windows. You wanted it below and you wanted it horizontal. Yep. So this is what they had come up with. It's 12 inches tall by 10 feet wide, and it's black and gray. Good. Looks good to me. Board members? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, a motion Thank to you. approve the signed request for Paris Mortgage Company as presented on August 12th. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. I, so yeah, we're going to need a copy that we can uh, we can sign. So we're going to need two. Actually, we're going to need two copies. Thank you. Okay. All right. And is there anybody here for hedro hedro exclusive properties? Okay. Um, we looked at and approved the contractor signed for East West. So we just have two to look at. One is for El, Pico, El Pelicano Restaurant. You want to? And apparently the world has changed and it can face you. Okay. There you go. Great. Okay. Now these signs already exist. Correct. So. Okay. You didn't realize that you were placing made a sign. Them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, can you do me a favor and grab the microphone? The uh, top sign is lower, okay. so we're going to get an updated picture tomorrow. Okay. Oh, you moved it down already? No. Well, it already exists it's lower already down there. there. Oh, it's already yeah, there? It's up yeah. there. It looks like a billboard, but where it's actually located seemed fine if you drove by and looked at it. So if you guys are okay with the sign itself. It's fine. It's fine with me. Yeah. I've seen. If you're okay with the sign itself, I would approve it pending receipt of an updated photograph that shows it in its existing location. Its existing location is about five feet lower where the bottom of it seems to be about equal to where the gutters are on the house. It's in a more appropriate location where it's currently existing. Okay. So I'm going to motion we approve the sign for Il Pelicano pending receipt of updated photographs. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And you can provide those to the building department and we'll get them signed for your permit. Okay. If you want to put up your Clarendon. This is for Clarendon Fine Art. And can you just take us through the construction of the sign? I'm sorry. Take us through the, the materials and construction yeah, no of the sign. So it's a 10 feet square sign on um, 316 Starbond and then the painted uh, white vinyl. And are you proposing any signage on the window or the door? No. Okay. Board members? Is, it, is this a two-door? Where is this? Where is this going to be? Is that, can you center it better, or is that the centering? I can't tell. The door? I guess it's... It's centered in the space that's there. Okay. Is it? What I, what, what I would ask is that you scale it down a little bit and set yeah. it over the window. Can you do that? Yeah, it would look if much they, better. If you can scale it down to where it centers over the window because it looks kind of accidental. Can we do that? I think it's going to be too small. Smush the letters together. We can make the letters a little smaller. We can try. Okay. Because, like, to the left... They, yours is all caps, but to the left, they're, yeah. you Their know. Yeah, door is the 53B. That's what it's over. Yeah. It's over. Is that the door? That's yeah. the door. That's why I was asking if there's signage on the door. Well, then it is sort of centered. I mean, it does seem. It doesn't feel centered, though. No, it's yeah. not. The easy. illusion is that it's not centered. Yeah. There's two doors there to the two tenants. Right. Right. It's one of those where they duck and go in. Yep. It's a, a recessed entry there. What I would suggest is you look at a version of it that centers over the window and ask them to talk to them. They also would, would want signage on their window that includes like their hours. Um, and then bring it back to us and we can go from there. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to adjourn it. But if you bring it into the building department, I can get to the signage committee. And as long if the signage committee agrees with it, we can sign it up outside of meetings so we can move you along a little faster because right. I know they're trying to open it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so motion to adjourn um, at the applicant's request, the sign request for Hedro exclusive properties. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If you can just either. It's Clarendon. If you can. If you can I'm sorry, Clarendon just did the wrong motion. For, let me redo that. Motion to accept the client's request for adjournment for Clarendon Fine Art. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 If you can just um, email it in. 
is fine, and then we'll take a look at it. And well, then we'll put it in front of Jane and I or the sign committee, so we'll take a look at it and see if we can move you along. Thank you very much. Okay. And if it's approved, we will need a hard copy for, for signature. Yeah. All right. So that takes us. We have no demo evaluations. 300 North Main is adjourned. That takes us to um, Landon Nordeman, 2011, uh, 2011 Irrevocable Trust at all at 251 Con Lane, and that is John Bennett. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, John Bennett for the applicant, Bennett and Reed, 212 Windmill Lane. And Ann Nordeman and John Nordeman are with me this evening. Um, hopefully, everyone was able to look at the uh, inventory of the property that was uh, compiled by Stephen Ramundo, who's a certified arborist, as well as the um, his letter in which he states that, uh, gives you a little bit of his background, uh, the sycamore maples and honey locusts, not surprisingly honey locusts, are sort of weed trees, uh, are not worthy of preservation. Indeed, the honey locust situated next to the pool house in the pool is already beginning to impact on the foundation. I can tell you that myself. There are some dogwoods and Japanese maples. I've been there myself, and they can easily be relocated. But he does recommend the preserving the European beech and the American American beech, which are noted on the one is right almost right on the road. At first, I thought it was in the in the right of way, but then there's another one, quite a grand one, that's behind the parking area. Quite a grand one. Yes. Excuse me. Quite, quite. a grand one. It is. Right. Yes. It really it's is. Tree. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's. That's some issues, but it still seems to be thriving, so yeah. let's, let's keep it there. Yeah. Survive this long, and it looks great. Yeah. Okay. They're glorious trees. They really are. That's all right. One. So this Does is... Does anybody need to have a copy of it? No, this was, this was... Let me get my language correction. This was a motion to approve a um, certificate for, for demolition, correct? Yes, and then... Right. This didn't seem to be an issue at all with that, but some of the board members wanted to see an inventory of the trees. Which that's yeah, that's exactly correct. Yeah. Board members, are you satisfied with the uh, inventory of the trees? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to motion to move to written decision to approve the demolition of um, 251 Pond Lane with the stipulation to, re to retain the two trees as identified by Arborist in the letter from John dated July 31st, 2024. Okay, and what about the ones to be relocated? Is that are we leaving that out? No, we're just saying that they're small, the, so they can be relocated. I don't have an issue. No, I, I, mean, I, trees think, are fine. I think the two trees that have identified are the two we were concerned yeah. with. Got it. Okay, the, and those are two American beaches. No ones. No, it's the one American beach and the one. It's a European beach. There's a European a, beach and an American, American beach. beach. Wow. Excuse me. Okay. And okay. Okay. So I'm in a motion to approve to move to written decision to approve the demolition with the stipulation to preserve the European beach, the American beach. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. There you go. Thanks a million. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Thank progress you. already. Okay. Next. And the oh. next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move up an application. Thank you. Uh, it's a new matter application, but we have a special guest. And to be fair to the parents that brought their special guests, I'm going to ask that we move up to 68 North C B North C Road. Uh, we're going to go out of order in one new matter. And you have the affidavits, and are they in order? Yes, I do, and yes, they are. Great. If you'll come on up and then have a seat and introduce yourself. Good evening. How are you? My name is Anastasio Kazakis. Can, can you just pull the mic close? I'm the architect on the project. Okay. Um, as you know, it's a flag lot. Um, existing one-story ranch-style dwelling, and we're proposing to construct a uh, second-floor addition over the existing first floor, uh, rear and front porches, uh, interior alterations to the existing first floor, and that's pretty much the, uh, the project. Okay. Do you want to take us through the materials? Sure. Um, so, to start, uh, front door entrance, we have a, a, a sample uh, exterior French and sash door. If you do me a favor and lay them out on the table facing you so the sure. camera can pick them up, that we'll take, would be great. Take them apart. Or I can flip through them or take them apart. Uh, set, you don't have to take them apart. Just set it on the table to where the camera can pick it up and then flip through your pages. Okay. Okay. 
that's our front door. Uh, color as selected by owner. The windows, 400 series, double hung. Uh, simulated divide, divided lights. The exterior color white. Interior would be white as well. Sliding doors, Anderson 400. Uh, color would be white on the outside, white on the inside. For a trim material, we have Azac or wood, white or primed and painted. The exterior wood siding, five inch cedar shingles. The color would be natural. The roofing material, um, asphalt architectural style, uh, color to match existing, which is a, a dark gray. Gutter material, white aluminum. The columns would be square, um, fiberglass, color white. Um, in the center of the house, there's a special roof feature, uh, standing sea metal roof. And the color we have as selected by owner, which is, you know, to match the roof. And that's all for materials. And the chimney is brick? The chimney is brick, correct. Okay. Board members. <clears throat> What's there now? Nina and Jane, comments? How about you, Mark? We have, a, we have a rendering. It's in there. Oh, you mean on the, could you? A color rendering? No, I have the exterior no, elevation. No, of the uh, outside of the house. It's in this pack. Right, the, the front? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm yeah, not. we have. Uh, there's a front elevation. Not a, there's no color. There's, we, we don't, don't have a color. color. We just need it. She wants to see. If you, I mean, you could set it out, yeah, yeah, set yeah, out sure. there and put it on. A001 and A002, I believe. Yeah, I, I have that. I was just wondering oh. if you had. Um, no. Oh, okay. Never mind. They, they haven't done an actual rendering of it. No. Okay. Kathy, anything? I think there's an awful lot going on with the metal roof. And the, the windows above the um, pediment seem, it just seems like there's just too much happening there, along with all the other features. Okay, I'm going to jump in and see where we go. Here would be some of my comments. Um, I think because the the widths of the peaks that come out on either side of your of your of, of the roof are are sort of narrow. I feel like the standing the size of the standing seam roof is a little overpowering, and in the actual pediment that you put over the front door, you it, it seems to angle um, where the rest of the house doesn't, and I don't think that really fits in because it looks like a false borrowed history of an old house, which it's not. Um, so I, and then, then the, the gang of six windows or seven windows that goes over it is sort of that contemporary expression against a more, con a more traditional house, um, feels disruptive to the facade of the house. So now when I look at the columns that are by the porch on the left and the right, the columns should go out to the end of that pediment. So either you bring that down and rethink the fenestration pattern over that, but the columns should go to the end and we shouldn't have that sort of overhang. That's not normal. Um, and, and the door, as you have it featured here, does not match actually the picture that you're showing us to what the actual cho choice is from the homeowner. So we want to see those things synced up. Because um, one you have here is pictures as an arch top, and the one you just showed us is not. Um, do you plan any surface lighting fixtures on the house? Uh, no. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that the detail work that you have in the... Um, 
two facing gables on the upper roof. That's a dental treatment that comes out against, that's white dental treatment or, or is it a dental type treatment that comes out against a, a yellow shingle? Correct. Is right. The top part would come yeah. out, you know, it would, right. there, there would be an offset, maybe six okay. or five All or right. six inches. Because to me, are there, are we balanced left to right or is, is the column to the right is actually a little wider than the column to the left? Right, correct. The one, the side to the right is a little bit wider. Right, which is why we have five and three on the. Okay, yep. um, the one thing I do note on your on your drawing is that the windows don't line up between the first and second floor, and they're not. They seem to be off by just almost a shingle width or one and a half shingle width. So when you actually look at it, it almost looks that window is not centered on that wall. I don't know if there's a reason for it, but they're not centered to each other. It looks it looks it does it looks like a mistake. Okay. Um, the, flare, oh, pardon, the, the flare of the house, I think, is attractive. Um, the standing seam roof, I think you could think about that. I think we either need less of it or it needs to come farther down. And maybe it just seems to be far-facing and a little heavy to my eye on that. Um, along the east elevation, my question is, uh, what's going on with the two uh, facing gables and the peaks that are over the left and right hand side. One seems to have a board treatment, one doesn't, but they, they don't seem to match the other sides of the house. When I look at page A002, because you've got defined treatment across the front of the house, but you have no treatment on these that match. So it looks like part of the house, the side, the east elevation doesn't match the, I guess is the front elevation of the house. The west elevation, there's not harmony. Uh, my same comment would come over the, where you've got the cover over the patio that the column width, the column should go to the end of the covering instead of having that overhang. Um, I think the window to wall ratio looks good. Um, and then the same question, your north elevation is that what is, what's the actual treatment inside the gable? Um, because it matches half the treatment on the east side, but we want to see them sort of match all the way around. Uh, and I'm assuming these are chimney pots on the top of this house? Correct. Um, we'll ask other board members how they feel about that. And there's an indent brick treatment in the center of the chimney. Is that, is that what's detailed here? Yes. That's, that's nice. Um, and on the south elevation, the same question. I have the same question of what's going on inside the, inside the gable end. OK. Wow. Um, so those would be my comments. Can I just touch on one? one Please touch on any of them. The, the easy one. Uh, so yeah, the windows, they, they're out of alignment a little bit on the right side. If you look at the floor plan, right. uh, I did the best I could because there's a you, you know, bathroom on the first floor with, with the bedroom, and then it has to do with the plan on the inside. So it wasn't like a mistake. It was like as good as we could get it as far as you know, it being scented. Okay. Well, don't you think it would be less obvious if we got rid of that roof? So geometric. The standing seam in the front. And I personally, I don't get those windows, the kind of little the seven. I don't, what's, what's in that? there? Uh, what's behind that space? Yeah. Um, I'm, ass I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you've got a double height. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a right, correct, a foyer. Okay. I just think that, that you foyer probably need to rethink, rethink that fenestration plan. And again, you're going to have to rethink those curved. Okay. So those curved angles. Yeah. That I whole lost. Area seems to be the center. We have yeah. trouble. The roof, the windows. Yeah. We, I took the two bottom out, but there was a lot of wall area, so I kind of put them back in. That lower roof, too, up over the border go is a standing seam. I don't well, know if you ditch yeah. the three in the middle, it might be okay. Well, I just, I just think, yeah, I, I agree. I think just take a look at it and just... Rethink it. Yeah, because yeah. it's a little jarring compared to... You've got very nice balance to the rest of the house, and I think it's just a contemporary jarring element, and there are probably some other options that are going to look a little more in keeping what is uh, more normally seen in, in, in a harmonious nature in the village of Southampton. Okay. Um, in terms of the scale and the massing of the house, especially on that property, I think you've done a great job. I still want to know how they grow those, uh, the limelights they have in front of the house, because you have the biggest limelights that I've seen, and none of them are drooping, and I don't know how you did that when we were walking the property today. Um, 
but those those would be my my comments about the architecture. Okay. Are there any comments from the public? Oh, <laughs> they could find it. What? Oh. <laughs> Really? They can still comment the pictures. Magical mystery yeah. tour to go down there. I was amazed. All right. So that's a bit to deal with. Um, do, you th do you think you can be ready? For, I'm sure you can for September 9th. That's a long yeah, yeah. time for me. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Is there like a deadline to submit? The, yes. Maybe the yes. Tuesday, the week prior at noon, and then the hard copy in digital format to the building department. Okay. So Tuesday, September 9th, or Monday. The meeting is on the Monday. Right, the meeting is on a Monday, so that it'll be due the Tuesday, Tuesday prior. Okay, so that's probably the third, right? Uh, I believe that's right. Let's see. Sage, we had no raised hands. Nope. Okay, so you would like us to adjourn to September 9th. Is okay. that correct? Okay. Yes. Um, it's be motion, the third. Mo motion to accept the client's request for adjournment to September 9th for. 268B North Sea Road. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just a few adjustments. We'll see you then and then move sure. on. Sounds good. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Okay. Okay. Where is it? It's okay. 32 minutes. Okay, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Let's go back to um, thirty to public hearing non-historic. Let's go back to 32 Moses Lane for a demolition evaluation of an existing dwelling and again construction. Good evening, how are you? Or well, yourself. Thanks for the appearance, Joe Burke, Burke and Sullivan, forty-one Meeting House Lane, Southampton. I have uh, Tim McCulley, my associate, with me as well, and the architect, uh, Lucy, is here as well. So uh, since the last hearing, we submitted some uh, additional uh, information for the board's uh, consideration, um, including a, m a memorandum to address the issues that were raised at the last hearing, as well as an engineer's report uh, that the applicant uh, had prepared regarding, uh, specifically regarding the structural integ integrity of the uh, existing dwell dwelling that's uh, proposed for demolition. Yes, we saw that. Okay. Um, first, if, if okay, I'd like to have um, the architect present the changes for... Um, no, let's deal with the demo request first. Okay. Uh, because we have to have A before we can think about B, so let's deal with that. Understood. Okay. Okay. Um, Board members, we all received the paperwork. I'm assuming we had time to review it. On the, the What had come up on this property, because it's a four square, it's not in a historic district, but it's a four square house, and there had been some um, desire conversation about should we landmark this house because it's a four square in the village. That's the conversation at the last meeting. Um, I think now I'm going to turn it over and get opinions from the board members. Um, hi, I, while I think, I. I for me, this house doesn't reach the level of landmark, something to be landmarked. Um, I think part of it is, I think what the house that we've seen and is quite harmonious and will be a welcome and appropriate addition. So I think taking those two into consideration, I don't think that, I don't think the existing house really reaches the level okay. for landmarking. Jane, Nina. Very sad to see this go. I understand it's not um, worthy of landmarking. Okay, Nina. I, I agree. Is it? Well, I never thought it was. I'm the okay. from the beginning, <laughs> so fine. Just for the public to know, we had a historic consultant go and look right. at the house. And the criteria that we look at for, for landmark, if a house is not in a historic district, we have two choices. We can either choose not to landmark it, which signals the building department the right to uh, issue a demolition permit, or we can choose to landmark a house if, if we believe that it rises to that criteria. Consider Other five criteria, um, six criteria, um, it rose to the level on one. But it was not a house of a, a house of a historic person or a famous person from Southampton that didn't really strong. So, while it meets one of them, it's not in a historic district. And I agree that I don't think this is the house that I would make that move to actually landmark on. I don't think it's strong enough criteria for this house. Therefore, 
I'm going to motion that we do not pursue landmarking for 32 Moses Lane. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So then now let's move to the house. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Lucy. Well, what's the date? That's a good thing. We had a lot of them. Yeah. 23rd. Right. June 23rd. June. The joint has been rolled up and waiting for two months. <laughs> so. I know you've been you've been punching at the pit to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, the changes actually is what the board suggested. We took the front eyebrow dormer out. I, I have June 28th. Is that right? Oh, okay. Probably. Do you have a 23rd? Like I said, I thought I got a lot of paperwork. It's... First thing, I'm going to ask you to pull the mic closer. Did you introduce yourself? Uh, this is CEO Liu. I'm the architect for 32 Moses. Okay. 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 These are this not, is, these are the same it, it's stamped. It's probably stamped on the day. That's probably when it was received. Okay. Okay. But it was. Um, on the drawing, the dated on yeah, the I corner got is uh, 23rd. Got it. Okay. Okay. We took the front dormer out, the eyebrow. The eyebrow dormer is it's gone. And the rear dormer, we took it out too. And I reduced the height of the doors and reduced the window height too on the second floor. Everything was reduced in the back. Based on four uh, recommendations. Okay. I can see if I can find the old second floor. This was the, uh, the rear that we did for the past meeting. Yep. So the front is pretty easy. Front just removed eyebrow. The back, we have taller doors and taller windows on the second floor. I basically used whatever skill I have and I lowered them. Okay. I lowered, can we get it on the screen, it on please? The screen? Thank you. Is that the 28th? Yeah. I don't think. This is the current previous. Right. Okay. 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 So you can see that the, this is the um, comparison I did for the last presentation yep. and the doors are taller on the first floor yep. and the window was set higher the windows and doors were set higher so I basically lowered all of them and I of course took out the dormers there's no dormers okay and just one question any, any surface mounted, mounted lighting that I should we should be considering no Okay. Because there is a little tiny bit of porch here, we'll, we'll put light underneath it. Okay. Board members. I think it looks better. Mm -hmm. Might be still. Do you think there's still too many windows in that? I personally don't, but. Okay. It's much better. Nina it Jane. It's more like not like all sliding doors and things in the back that I found. Unhappy. Yeah. I'm sorry? It's improved, yeah. Okay. Jane? Yes, it's better. Okay. Do we have any comments from the public? Okay. First of all, thank you. I think okay. um, you took the comments from the board to heart, and I actually think that the simplicity makes the house look better. Um, and, and now the amount of glass and your window to wall ratios are, are feel more appropriate and um, sort of calm the house down a little and I think it looks great. So I'm going to find my paperwork which I keep burying. Under all this. 
I'm going to motion that we approve. Um, we approve 32 Moses Lane based on drawings dated. Which is the drawing date that you're showing? June 26th. It's not June 23rd. Okay. Um, 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 Stamped. Yeah. Revision date, June based, 23rd. Based, based the revision date is June, based 20, on the, June 23rd. Okay, based on the drawing submitted with the revision date of June 23rd. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Here we go. Wow. Thank you. That's Thank good. you. Okay, so that brings us next to 185 Elm Street to renovate and construct a 1,050 foot square foot two story addition to an existing dwelling and expand an existing garage. Thank you. See you on the architect oh, 185 back. Elm Street. This one actually going to be a super easy one. The homeowner decided. Oh, you always say that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says they're going to be easy. This one really going to be super easy because okay. the homeowner decided not to do the renovation to the main house. Okay. They're going to keep what it is there. Okay. The only thing they did, uh, they are proposing to do is the uh, is a surface uh, finishes, like the finishes. So I'm going to read it. The roof is going to be dark gray asphalt, siding to be cedar singles, five and a half inch exposure, natural color. Windows to be white, trims to be white, garage door railings to be white, front door to be dark blue. So back me up. So they're not doing anything but painting it. All they're doing is painting the house and painting yeah. the door? Yeah. And then, but there's a garage in the back. In the garage. That was originally submitted. Okay. And that still stays. Okay. Let's go so there's a garage and okay. the pool. So, so house stays as it is the garage okay. it will add this little sliver if you can see nobody ever says sliver. my client would like to do nothing but go ahead <laughs> okay there's a little sliver in the back of the garage that's yeah. going to add and then okay. you're going to do a pool okay and that's it wow that's a big change mm -hmm. okay great I, I said to them yes so much easier just check. What are you doing in the garage? The garage. We're just going to do a little addition. bump in the back in order for us to have a room to actually park car in the back because it's shallow in the okay. past. Yeah, I saw that. So I have the uh, G, G1 joint. I yep. believe I have the proposed and the proposed and the addition. Uh, I mean proposed and the uh, existing. existing side by side. So you can yep. see it's right here. You do. Not so much changed. That's in fact the world's smallest one. But okay. Mm -hmm. Board members. Great. Yeah. <laughs> More wow. people would okay. go with the flow. Lucia, gotcha. were the originally proposed changes still in the plan set? Uh, Chris Stanford, super C. He's he Stanford. Okay. Super C. And I'll I'll look at them and make you sure can, before I sign. Can, Great, I just right, just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. But right. it is still Work. in there, but it's a super C. Works for me. Uh, any comments from the public? Alrighty then. Um, motion to approve the plans for e exterior painting and uh, only from the main house and renovations to the garage from, from plans stamped. What's your plan date? August 3rd. Okay, mo this is a uh, motion to approve. August 3rd for plans the main house. What's your re revision date? August 3rd for the main house, but the garage is a different Garage is April 10th. Okay, for the main house, August 3rd, and the garage from April 10th. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? And the, and the site plan, Aye. April 10th. Okay. I, before I sign it off, when I come in to sign them, I'll just look them over one more time to make sure it's clear. But thanks. I'm sorry. I will look them all over again before I sign off in the building department. But great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's the first time. I yeah, think. anybody else want to do nothing? <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we're back to 126 Meadowmere to construct a 52,070 square foot two story dwelling with an attached garage.
Welcome back. Good evening, board members. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Jay Andriasi, representing the owner. Chase Andriasi, builder, also representing. Chase Andriasi, uh, the builder, representing one, uh, the owners of 126 Meadowmere Lane. Okay. Okay, I wanted to um, there was one note on that landscape plan that was changed just a note it was actually a word was taken out okay. that talked about when we were going to remove the existing property line hedges the neighbors had requested that and they wanted that work done when we uh, after we do the demolition not to wait for a building permit. So we agreed to that. We, so we took, we just changed that note on there. Everything else remains the same. Okay. Thank you for, I, look, you've done a great job of listening to the neighbors and we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Just wanted to point out a few things that we changed over okay. the last three meetings. Uh, we removed the gable end triangular accents. We removed the transom windows that you suggested. We removed the freeze board between the first and second floor and we replaced that with a flat out siding as shown on the render rendering in the plans. We um, changed the wood chimney, which was actually a mistake on the renderings, to a white brick chimney that Chase will show you what we want to use there for a sample. We changed the front double door to a single door with side lights, changed the garage doors from solid wood panels to a top glass and wood panels beneath. We designed the east elevation on Meadowmere Place to coordinate with the front north elevation, also having a front appearance. We removed the approximate, approximately 100 square feet of glass on the south elevation as per your request. We removed the handrail detail at the balcony in the rear of the house and designed it to blend in as part of the house siding. And we brought the flared siding detail around on the west elevation added the upper garage roof and a lower wall roof wrapped around from the garage. There was some concern that the west elevation needed some work, some architectural work, which that we felt did that. And raising the garage roof made that east elevation look a little more appropriate with the entire size of the house. Yes. Okay. Board members. Oh, sorry. I apologize. What's the date? Of, I just got all the plans look like. No, they're, 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 they're the plans stated, uh, stamped in August 6th. I look at them. What I would tell what what I would tell you, and I'll turn it over to the board members. Um, for, uh, one of the things I would tell you is thank you. I think from where we started to where we're ending up, because uh, we started with a house that had chimneys but no fireplaces, and now we have chimneys and fireplaces. Um, I think from a from a massing and scale to the neighborhood standpoint, we've come a long way. Um, I think the flare at the center of the house works, and I think what you basically added is you've added a box over the garage with the rocks, so it looks like a cohesive part of the house. No, 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 no longer looks like an addition or a renovation from the garage for, for what is a brand new house. I think um, I think those changes have made a big difference, and I think it's commendable. And uh, those will be my comments. Uh, the only thing, the, the roof. Over the entrance. The flat portico? Yeah. It's, Did you see it? Yeah, it's right here. No, I have it here too, but it's the same effect, isn't it? Yeah. I find that to be jarring. So it, it, I think the rest of it looks so much better, but somehow that real strict, squared off, I don't know what you. I guess you can't come out, is that right? Does anyone else have a problem with this? Yes. Um, when I saw it from the elevation here, when you see how far it comes out, 
Oh. I think it looks really flat here. Okay, when we that's look at, better. When we look at the projection from the, Still, east, it, yeah, from the east elevation, it makes more sense. All right. That's my only objection. It should not be a no. Yeah. Okay. Nina? Jane? Um, the only thing that I noticed is that on the either side of the door, it looks like clapboard instead of um, cedar, cedar shake. It is. It is. It's going to be a, a horizontal siding. I thought you said that last time, yeah. right? It's going to be a yeah. white horizontal siding, yes. We thought we needed a little contrast there since the door yeah. and the side lights are so large. It's really just a small three-foot spot on right and left side that the uh, sconces will be yeah. coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Have we seen right. the yeah. materials? Oh, that's an, that's an old one. That's yeah, an old but one. still has a lot of white around the way too big door. <laughs> It's the idea of it. That's not in this package. Definitely much improved. That's not this. But I agree with Susan that there is something about that very boxy front. That have we seen the materials that you're using? Kathy, pull your mic a little closer. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That would help. <laughs> Thank you. I think we Maybe went through them on. in one of the earlier meetings, but right. uh, we could run through them again. I have the material Thank list you, right if here. If you don't mind, to um, the roofing us. is going to be a, just a cedar perfection. Um, natural. So a sample of that right here. Uh, the siding is also a cedar shake sh uh, shingle, but it's a uh, twice dipped um, in a in paint to give it a gray, like a light gray color. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just point that out. This is a um, this is a house that this board approved that was just finished uh, about uh, maybe six months ago, and the rendering shows more of a gray. Whereas with this stain, you can see it adds a tan. Yeah. It's a little so it's a little softer. softer. This is that's, what we're going to use. Yeah. That's what we use on 68 Helm. Right. Thank you. If you put that next to your plan, the board members at home will be able to see it. They'll pick it up on the television screen. Thank you. Um, okay. The, uh, the window trim and the fascia board, that's all a, um, an AZAC siding um, that I don't have with me. But um, I think we've all seen that. Yeah. The, uh, the chimneys are going to be a white brick. Uh, the front door is a true style reserve. I have a packet of the, uh, the specs of that here. Um, but that'll be paint. That'll be painted just in a uh, in a white to match the trim and this and the uh, and the fascia board. Um, Can you see the photograph closer? The one is that so? That's the same. Yeah, is that the same siding? Is that that's the yeah. same siding? So you Can get a, just, an idea of how, how much lighter it is. Thank though. you. We yeah. have that. We had that noted as a specification on right. the drawings. Thank you. May I just go back to the entry box? Just yes, please. Uh, yeah. Quickly, I would say that if you look at existing entry parties, often the columns are brought closer in to the side lights and. If you did that, you would align the top windows of the second floor edges with the edges of the columns and bring the whole length so it would be as slim as, as the window um, series on top. And I think it would be more in keeping with neighborhood um, the way the way the proportions work for an entry porch. So the whole covering would Not be? Not sure I understand. No, the covering would stay, but the support. Is this right, Nina? The supports would line up with the windows above. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, but how we been getting out of seven then different? I, I've listened to the chairman over and over right. again, telling you and to go out. He always told us to right. keep those out to the end, which which we changed early on. I think if you shrink that box anymore, it's it's going to get too narrow with that that large front door there. Okay, maybe it's just the view from the rendering, the way it's sh shadowed and shooting. And I'm just sort of echoing what Susan and Jane, I, I kind of agree with them. But um, it may be the way the rendering <coughs> appears, I'm not. If you look at, um, Nina, if you look at the rendering on the next page, two pages in, which shows what was their south rendering. No, sorry, not south. The east rendering on page two. You can see sort of the depth of it. Right. Okay. Because when I looked at it flat on, I was like, hmm. But when I looked at the depth of it, it made more sense. Okay, makes 
Okay. Okay. Any comments from the public? That awesome. loud talkative public. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, you, we've been through several iterations of this house, and from where we started to where we've ended up, I appreciate your patience. Um, but I think we, we're now at a place where we have a house that's appropriate to the neighborhood. I think the scale of the massing work, and it works as a whole, and not as a house that we added some pieces to. Um, and I think you've listened to us, and I think you've adjusted along the way, and I appreciate it. So for that reason, I'm going to motion to approve um, 126 Meadow Mirror Lane based on drawings stamped into the billing department August 6, 2024. Um, and their date is a, issued on 8-3-24. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your feedback. It was, it was long, but it, it was did long, come but out worth of it. here much long, better. But worth it. Thank you so much. For where it is. It's a process. We thank you for your Okay. Good luck with your project. Thanks. Okay. So that brings us to 195 Downs Path, alteration to existing two-story single-family dwelling. Okay, you know the drill. If you'll pull the microphone and introduce yourself, that'd be great. Good, in, good evening, board. I'm Michael Kirschman, applicant and architect for 195 Downs Path, uh, Cabanita Properties. Uh, and we are here this evening addressing the board's comments from early in July. And we believe that we have taken into consideration the board's comments and are able to address some of the issues that we have now. And primarily, I, I do want, although I could go back to the front and, you know, north and I can go to the east, north, and south elevations, although I didn't hear many comments on those last time. I could, I could review those again. I really wanted to address primarily the west elevation. Okay. And is that the rear? Yeah. Yeah. With the loja. Yeah. Oh, west is the front door. Oh. No. West is the rear. Oh. This says proposed. This says proposed west. Well, that's not right. Okay. Is that? Oh, no, yeah. On your SK7, you've called the front door the west. It's a mis okay. Oh, no, it's no west. worries. Okay. And so, in and and essentially, the board last time had had expressed concerns about making it more of a, a, a residential aesthetic. Much you know. Better similar to what is done in, in other adjoining homes in the area, obviously. So in order to, to address that, we, um, I could show that the previous drawing uh, to show what we did and make the changes, but I'll just explain them here. Uh, in, this, in this rendering that you could see, it's posted here and then um, in the front and the proposed west elevation, we introduced a central dormer that breaks up that large center roof that is visible at least from the rear yard and possibly other yards in the neighborhood. We have also um, uh, eliminated the balconies that were on those two flanking center, uh, the center mass uh, structure, the, the groups of three on, the, on both ends. We had balconies there in the past and we elim eliminated that. You know, easing the transition from the, from the roof structure into the, the siding, making that a little bit more simple and, and commonplace. We also 
uh, in that center area, we had also eliminated a, a, a panel of doors and, and flanking side lights. We had a group of four there in the past, and what we, we had introduced in this case was a set of three windows that, that are representative from the uh, north, south, and east par parts of the home, and it, it just breaks up the scale, and there's not as much glass in that, in that center area as well. We've, we've also added a traditional wood casings to the, to the uh, door and, and side light transoms, uh, not to the edges in lieu of the brick. We had a modular brick soldier course before, uh, again, replicating elements from other parts of the house that, that uh, now are introduced into the, to the back elevation. So we think that it, it reduces the scale of what was done before, the plainness of what was done before, and introduces new elements that, that are reminiscent of adjoining properties. When I went back to my notes, I think the bulk of our notes were actually on the west elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, board members. I think it's much. I think it's okay. I, it mm -hmm. looks like a house to me. Much more so than like the front and the back were so discordant. That's exactly right. So I'm good with it. Nina? I agree. Jane? Oh my god. Yeah, Any comments from the public? Oh. I know. It's, like, it's my job. I have to ask. No, it's right. fine. It's like Christmas. These are all going yeah. through. Here's what I here's what I'd say. Like by breaking up that big mass in the up roof in the center, I think has added some rhythm to the house. It's very nice. And then by, with breaking the the with breaking that huge rhythm with sliders across the back, it actually makes it feel more residential. I think you've done a great job. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. The front is beautiful. And again, Thanks. and again, I, I will also tell you that we appreciate that you took our comments to heart and you've addressed them. Thanks for the input. It's a much improved project. Of course. So with that, I'm going to motion to approve um, 195 Downs Path with drawings, with the drawing stack dated, uh, well, stamped in August 6, 2024, because um, I, I think these your 82 date here is on the same on both of them. So I'm going to say from the from the material from the stack that was stamped on by the building department on August 6, 2024. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Okay. So, did a great job of not filing my thing. Next, we have 146 Halsey Street, um, City of Guevara. Uh, do you have the affidavits and are they in order? Yes, and yes. And I think that's John. Okay. La Monica it's from Coral Brothers should be on Zoom. Do we have him? Yeah. Okay. Great. He's here generally to ask answer questions. He's a design professional who works at Coral, although Mark Schiffer drew the plans. So this is not in the historic district. Um, it's not a contributing structure, but we're really trying because Mr. Cabrera really likes the house, um, which is why I bought it. We're really trying to retain as much of the house as makes sense, and yet make, bring it into the into the 21st century in terms of, of living, but not in style. So we're really renovating and expanding the existing house on the corner of Halsey and Cooper. You might remember not some not too long ago, the house right across the street was granted a demolition permit. But I think what replaced it, when I said across the street to the south, I thought what replaced it was trying to stay within the character of the neighborhood clearly with retaining the architectural style of this house and a good deal of it We're trying to do the same thing. I think Sheets, um, oh, well, I'm sorry. We did go to the Zoning Board of Appeals in connection with the proposed addition. It needed a very small amount of relief and we were, the board was, we were successful. It was just a little infill in the house on the south side of the home, so the board granted that relief. I think the easiest way is, if I may, to look at, um, 
try to take you through quickly. Uh, are, are sheets 201, I'm sorry, A201 and A202, and they provide you with existing versus proposed elevations of the home. So a two-story addition is proposed that would extend primarily along the eastern side of the home. Um, on the west, hold on a second, let me get there. On the west elevation, which is what I think of as the street, extend out a little bit on the west. There's the existing there as the proposed. I think the only change um, is we're adding a, adding a window to that west elevation. That's, that's to me what reads like the front of the house. That's the, the house on, on Halsey Street. So essentially the elevation will, be, will be, remain the same with one, one exception that in the terms of the fenestration, the addition of the window. The house, we're going to reframe the roof. That's an important part for everyone to know. We're going to reframe the roof so that actually the, 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 the height of the roof is going to go uh, from 25 feet 4 inches to 28 feet 3 inches, raising the roof a mere uh, 2 feet 11 inches, but retaining, of course, the style of the house and the angle of the, and the pitch of the roof. So uh, we think that's important. Again, trying to work with what we have as much as possible, um, and that's important. The east elevation, and that's where probably from a fenestration point of view and from a, a, a view, most of it's happening, that, that uh, expansion is coming out to the east. So you'll see the east elevation, this is disappearing and being replaced with the expansion. Hopefully that all makes sense. Then if we shift to, uh, what do we have? Let me look at my notes here. Let me go back to them. Then if you look at... Um, a202, this is the south and the north elevation. And I've just drawn, here's the existing, here the proposed, and I've just drawn on it with my own pen. You can see that the extensions, where the extensions are. So uh, again, trying to keep within the existing house. Ed, in addition, let me give you the GFA numbers. The existing is 1656, the proposed is 2000. 292, the allowable is 2,430. We're increasing by 636 square feet. We did, when we were at the Zoning Board of Appeals, one of the neighbors, a gentleman you might know by the name of Jeff, Jeffrey Broadleaf came in and he was very concerned about, there's a bay window on the south, ele on the south elevation and uh, he wanted that retained even though it wasn't the A or B talked about it and I said that's nice we'll, we want to retain that we actually like that the reason we were taking it off when we went to the Zoning Board of Appeals is because it was allowed us from a trade-off <laughs> point of view to reduce the nonconformity on the street line but the A or the ZBA didn't seem to have a problem with it it exists and Mr. Broadley liked it and, which was a big relief because we liked it too um, I did have a conversation with Mr. Broadley today he may be here he may be on Zoom he, he just wanted the building department to know and it, to, that the, the house, the roof is being reframed to just under uh, th uh, th um, three feet excess in height. And what that does, I've been in this house, it was owned by a friend of mine. Um, it, it allows the ceiling heights on the first floor to be nine feet and eight feet on the second floor. This is a house that's built in the early part of the latter centuries and the ceiling heights are quite, quite low. Do you know what the existing heights are? Oh, they're high. God, I don't know. Maybe. Do you know? Just like, eight feet. Pardon? Eight feet. Eight feet. Okay, thank you. I, I think eight feet is being generous upstairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, so that, that's really what we're doing uh, here. Um, not changing any of the, any of, the uh, of the materials. It'll be cedar shingle, white trim. It's currently asphalt uh, roofs that uh, are or a nice quality asphalt, and that's what's going to be, going to be replaced. It'll be continued that. Um, and I think, unless there are any questions, that that's all I have to say. Let me make sure. So, yeah, the uh, structures are so going to reframe the roof slightly elevated from the current height, but fully in conformance with, with height requirements, same materials, um, and trying to work within the uh, the general bones and structures of the existing house. 
I think so. John, were there any changes to the detached garage? Uh, n no, but that's there's no proposal. Okay. I know it was part of an earlier plan, but I just, just want to make sure. Yeah, the, the part here. of the it was part of the other plan was to uh, we we're gonna we we're gonna reduce the size of right. the um, attached garage. We're trying to we we had an application for a pool. The zoning board of appeals will probably see that again, but we wanted to, it was it was holding up getting to this board, so I withdrew that without without prejudice. But uh, I think the second iteration did not show a change. I, you know, I think um, part of the concern is this is a hundred-year-old house. Um, well, again, it's not an historic district. It's not a contributing structure. I understand that. And we're, we're, we're I have a memo here, actually, from Jeff. That it, I don't know if Jeff's going to be on or not, but I'm going to read part of it just because he sent us a memo, so I want to read it through record. Um, the application includes, and there's more in here, but the application, application includes the construction of a new foundation. The plan submitted did not clearly indicate whether the house is being elevated. Specifically, elevations A201 east and west and A202 north and south are either incorrectly drawn or incorrectly labeled. The scale for both existing or proposed as stated is 316. However, it's not the case when one applies a ruler to the drawings. Um, it's being raised. If it is being raised above its current height, the scaling and mass to the street would be altered in a way that would not be respectful of the house's scaling and mass, nor harmonious to the nearby properties. Should this be the case, I respectfully ask the board to require the applicant to provide a streetscape to include the three houses to both the north and south. Um, so let me start there. You're going to raise the house and put a foundation. Foundation, yeah. and when you put the house back down, is it going? It will the, 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 the will the height remain will consistent? What it yeah. is. No, not the height of the house, the, the house. from the ground. Oh, from the ground? Yes. Yeah, we can accomplish that. Yes. I mean, there's plenty of depth to ground water there. I'm not concerned about keep, keep it, keeping it up. All right, so, if, so it's, little, yeah. if it's, I don't know what the exact measurement is, if it's two feet six inches above the ground right now, it's current foundation, when you, dig, when you dig down and put it back down, the base of the house will still be two feet six inches above the ground? I don't see any problem with that, Lucien. Yes, yeah, that would be, that's the case. That's yeah. the time. I think the only time you kick foundations up are if you're concerned about ground water, right. it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this, this well, stay the same exact height. Okay. How are you accomplishing? You're not raising the roof no, two feet. You're actually, are you taking out all the framing on the first and second floor? No, no, to, no. We have to reframe reframe, reframe the roof where necessary. It's only going to add three well, feet. Yes, but you have, if your current ceiling is eight feet, mm -hmm. that means on the first floor you're going to take out all the framing on the first floor and reframe it a foot higher in order to get your ceiling height, right? And then on the second floor, are you going to do the same thing? I just want to understand what the construction. No, okay. Please, uh, sure. if I can. If of I can course. Read. So the first, the first floor is actually just like existing slightly higher than eight feet. I think eight feet one inch or so. I think that will remain because we might not uh, take the first floor joist out. Well, that won't be the second floor joist out. But the second floor we're raising. So we, we're taking the uh, um, part of this because we're expanding the house to the side a bit. So the angles have to be for the new width. So the peak of the roof will go high, so, um, higher by what was it, two feet, eleven inches? It was two eleven. Um, but the first floor, so the first floor is remaining at the same height, and the second floor deck will remain at the same height, um, and then everything above will, will adjust as needed for that new, for the new portion. There was a misunderstanding maybe between me and John of the of raising the first floor too wide. I don't think that's going to be the case. Because um, that would require a lot more deconstruction of the house to, re to reconstruct the new one, like you mentioned, to raise it up. It will stay where it is, but the second floor will be will be changed. So just so we can be sure, there's no there's no plan to change any of the framing uh, height for, on the first, first floor. floor. Correct. I mean, so we will raise the house and add a foundation, uh, a basement, essentially. But when we put it back down, it will be the, the exact same height as the existing is. Okay. I hope that's clear. Okay. Board members. Okay. Jane, Nina. I have the second floor. The overall height of the, the overall Jane, the best way to answer that the overall height of the house is currently 25 feet 4 inches. The finished home will be 28 feet 3 and a half inches, well within the height limitations. 
So we're raising the roof yep. by about the inches. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. So the, yes. The only elevated will be the second floor will be higher than it exists right now. Lucien, is that correct? So, so the floor of where you're standing on the second floor, it's going to be at the same level. Uh, but the, the height you have on the second floor will be slightly more essentially. The floor itself, which is also the first floor ceiling, will remain the same. That we're not changing. Okay. The, the, also, the house is, is growing three Neither. feet to the north, so yeah. in order to Correct. attain <laughs> the gable, it has, that roof has to be reframed. Okay. Otherwise, you'll have an asymmetrical <laughs> gable. Okay. Now remember, well, I'm I, glad you're you're using what you have there, and and um, I think it's um, commendable that you're not tearing the house down. Yeah. All Thanks. the details are remaining: the fascia, baseboard, exposed rafter tails, the columns in front. Those those traditional details are in the house will be carried over to the addition as well as what's being renovated. I was glad to see this because I don't think it takes any citation of the actual cases, but that that street, yeah, half the half the homes have been torn down. On the oh, street. we know. So I was happy to see that the, the was. Sometimes short. you have one that's just special to the neighbors. Sometimes we have houses special to the neighbors, and they have their comments to come in, and you know we take them into consideration. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's fine. The I spoke only to my only real quibble. Um, is the railing across the front porch? Because I think when I look at the simplicity of the existing house, that additional railing across the front seems unnecessary. And it's not there now. Let's see. Uh, the, that's the west elevation, correct? Yeah, if you look at the... Um, oh, well... Yeah, I, I don't like it either. I oh, think so it was because of safety. No. Oh, how oh. many steps No, you, up? you'd only have to have a rail depending on what the height is above the ground. And if, you, know, if it's you can raise steps, the, you know, don't raise the, what is okay. it, don't raise the bridge, lower the river. You can actually regrade the land up if you need the space for code for that, but it's a renovation. That was, that's the only thing I think is disharmonious to the house of the neighborhood, because when I looked at the other houses on the street, it was, a, it was a neighborhood of open porches and people used to talk to each other back before we had all hedges in Southampton. Um, and it just was the one thing that sort of added an element that I didn't feel was reasonable. We'll, we'll take it off. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Um, comments from the public? Okay, that, there's the public. Okay, so then I am going to motion to approve um, to approve 146 Halsey based on drawing submitted. What's your submission? Guevara Residence 146 Halsey is based on drawings submitted. Anybody have a stamp date? Uh, uh, 6 With the condition that. 6 What? 6 Take the railing off? Yeah, with the condition okay. that the railing be. With the, with the condition, you're right, that the railing. I'm trying to figure out the date here because the plans I have. It's so hard, these things. It's complicated. Yeah, okay. For permit A or B now, it says for 7-11-2024, with, with the stipulation that the railing removed across the front. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Amazing. It's a great little house in a great corner. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm I, glad I, I would, it's not We do appreciate down. that you're taking good care of it and um, understanding really? and appreciating That's its history awesome. and, the concern, and the concern about height to the street, because it does matter on that street. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time and comments. Okay, which takes us to 65 Woolley Street. Do you have the affidavits and are they in order? Yes and yes. Okay, so it's Jane and Remy Rodas. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to ask you to slide that mic over. Uh, good evening. I'm Jim McChesney. I'm the architect for uh, uh, this project. And I'm here with Jane and Remy. Hello. Are you the homeowners? Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Um, so this job doesn't really include any additions to the footprint. It's mainly there's an existing space in the middle of the house that we're going to subdivide and make a living room and um, a primary bedroom and with the result that we have some window changes um, to the existing walls and then there is a small addition on the second floor that's a bump out for a bathroom right it's a bump out for a bathroom 
Yes. And all the materials are going to match uh, the existing house. There'll be double hung white windows, um, simulated divided lights. It's really kind of a special house on the inside. There's a lot of um, just great details, um, interesting things, which um, we're planning on keeping and maintaining the, uh, the feel of the house. So the only things you're really asking for on A201, you're adding a chimney. Correct. You're adding a window. Yep. And you've got a bump out in the back. That's on small the th on the second floor only. Is that bump out the second floor only? Yes. Okay. Which is that little box that comes toward the back? I'm sorry. Is that little box that comes out toward the yep. back on the second floor? Exactly. With a single window on the proposed west elevation. Okay. Board members. This is a very special house since we're looking planned here. And I'm so glad to see that you're not really adding on much. But I was just con confused by the bump out where it was going to affect the back porch. It's really just right over the back porch. So it, if you look at the drawing 202 on 202, um, the, the orange circled area is the bump out and it sits right above the first floor porch. So we're not adding anything underneath it, we're just eliminating some of the roof on that first floor porch, which isn't visible from the street. No, I know it's not visible yeah, yeah. from the street. I, I, yeah. Just because there wasn't really a rendering to see what it looked like, I was curious. Um, it shows on the, it is not in a rendering, but it shows um, it on the drawing above it on the proposed north elevation. The, again, the orange circle clouded area is only on the second floor because there's wall underneath it on the first floor, which is part of the existing porch. Do you think we could get uh, it on the screen, please? I'm sorry? Could, Sage, could we see it on the screen, please? Great. Right. right, so this this little area is an addition, but this all on the first floor is existing. But is it? But it's not open. No, no. Okay. It's, it's a. It's an enclosed. It's on the first floor. It's a little back entry, which we're going to reconfigure, but no changes to the outside, and a pantry. So it's all enclosed. It's not over an open porch. It probably at one time had been open porch, but it's since been enclosed. Okay. Other board members? Such a cool house. Mm -hmm. Need any comment? It's a great house. Yep. 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 Wish there were more like You know what? What's more fun than quirky? This is a quirky yeah, it's, house. It's, 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 it's got totally. it goes down. It's the definition of quirky. It's got a covered it's breezeway. Right. It's got a garage Jeez. studio it's back there. Yeah. It's interesting on the land. It was fun to walk around. Um, I feel like what you're doing is respectful. Are there any comments from the public? Nothing better than a quirky house. All right. Um, then I say motion to approve uh, 65 Woolley Street from drawings. Stamped in June 12, 24, dated June 7th, dated June 7, uh, June 7, 2024. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Great. What's better than a quirky house? There is nothing yeah. better. <laughs> On that wonderful street. It's a beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us down to, the last but not least, gate. is the driveway gates for 144 Downs Path driveway gates. Are these new ones or this is returning? Returning. 
the return. So, you can have that face you, I think. Is some reason tonight, they can face you. Oh, right. Yeah. They have a whole new change of plan. It's very exciting. Just when you think you figured it out. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it keeps us on our toes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Gabby. I'm here from Arias Design on behalf of the homeowner of 144 Downs Path. I'm here tonight presenting to you a revised driveway gate drawing for your comments from the last hearing. Um, we received some clarification for your comments, and um, we feel now at this stage that the driveway gate meets your um, transparency code, and we've also provided additional dimensions for your comments from, one, from last session. Great. Uh, do, I, do I have oh, this? Yeah, here's a big thing. That's a big one. We're going to make all sorts of paper noise. Hang on. Here. For the last application, she did all sorts of paper noise. we got to get you guys oh, iPads. Yeah, we're going to drive safe. Okay. I can't help it. It's all right. There. Okay. And you, did you remove the light fixtures? Yes. The client decided that it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't there goes the dark sky issue. Okay. So now. Um, what I would tell you is the issue that we had is we didn't fill the gates for 40% transparent, and now looking at them reviewing this, I believe they are 40% transparent. Board members. Yep. yep. Nita Jane. Yeah, they look 40%. Great. And removing the light fixtures always makes us happy. Um, so I would say thank you for listening. And I'm going to motion that we approve. The driveway gates. Uh, the dri 140 driveway gates for 144 Downs Path based on drawings submitted. Stamped in. What are your stamped in dates? Oh, here. Should be August 8 2. Second. 8 2. Uh, for drawings uh, submitted, 8 2. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. They can take that gigantic board. <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, motion to close the August 12th meeting of the Board of Architecture Review and Historic Preservation. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.